What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Team Building Podcast. It is Matt Johnson in a surprise guest hosting role. What's up? What? I've got the man, the myth, the legend. Jeff Cohn is with me broadcasting from the new Snazzy Studio in Omaha, Nebraska. Jeff, what's up, man? Mr. Johnson. Hey, Matt just asked me if I want to introduce myself. I said, of course not. My narcissism wants him to call me the man, the myth, and the legend. And he did it. Thank you, Matt Johnson. What a wonderful introduction that feels hey, great. Anytime we can have a mutual admiration society, I'm on board. There you go. Hey, so <laughs> we were talking about the topic today. We don't want to spend a lot of time on it. So if you're just getting ready for a workout, this is going to be quick. This will get you through like maybe three sets. So <laughs> our focus today is to talk about the thing that I think has helped a lot of people become very successful. And that is the difference between you and me are the books that you read, the people you meet, and the podcasts that you listen to. And so Matt and I are going to talk about our threes, and we're going to get into each of these topics today and talk about the top three things within each of those categories that have helped make a huge difference in our world. That's right. All right. So, so let's start off with, uh, I don't know, you want to start off with podcasts and do that? Let's go. Sure. All right. Yeah. So, so, so funny. I'm going to kick that one off if that's okay. okay. Um, Obviously, everybody wants to perform at a higher level. And I spent my first five or you know, six years in the real estate business selling real estate and masterminding with local agents in my marketplace, but I needed more content. I felt like everyone was doing things the same way. So, of course, I went to webinars back before the word podcast was out there. I think they called them webinars or maybe blog videos. Um, and, and then they segued into podcasts. And Pat Hyben was one of the first ones. Mm -hmm. uh, that I ever saw. And what I took away from Pat is every time it was something really important to listen to, he'd say, now that's a pearl. <laughs> and so to this day, when anyone from my leadership team that listened to all those podcasts with me w say something that's valuable, we say, now that's a pearl, just like Pat. <laughs> How about you, Matt? We'll go back and forth. All right. Um, well, I'll, I'll give you my current favorite. Yep. So, uh, so I've been listening a lot to, uh, to the daily stoic. Ryan Holiday. And uh, I've, already actually, I've actually got the book, The Daily Stoic, which I read a, a portion of every morning. Uh, and then one of my podcast guests recommended a book called How to Think Like a Roman Emperor, which is amazing. It's about the life of Marcus Aurelius. And so then I went down the rabbit hole and started listening to a podcast called The History of Rome. Anyway, whole other story. But The Daily Stoic is really fantastic because it's short, it's calming, and it takes you a little bit out of the business world and it puts you into the self-development world to step, you know, take a step back and just breathe and think strategically and non-emotionally about your life and your business. Okay, awesome. And by the way, Pat Hyben's podcast, which is now ran by Aaron Amuchasegi, Paul Morris, and David Osborne, is called Real Estate. I believe it's Real Estate Rockstars. Let me pull it pull yeah, that up so. and verify yep. that. Yep, Real Estate Rockstars, great podcast. Uh, the second one is going to be Toby Salgado's podcast. I listened to that one a lot. Um, he interviewed a lot of top agents, continues to interview a lot. I think it's Real Estate Success Rocks. Um, and I will pull that up really quick to verify that. No, it's, uh, um, it's uh, Super Agents Live. It's oh, it is Super Agents. Yeah. Thank you. It is Super Agents Live. Sorry, Toby, but I still give you a shout out nonetheless. Um, what I got from both Pat and Toby is they did an awesome job interviewing from the perspective of an agent. So often someone starts a podcast and they have never been in the shoes of the person they're interviewing. And I think Pat and Toby did a really good job it, it, pulling as much information out as possible because of the perspective that they came from. So anybody aspiring to be the top agent they can be, a better leader, those are two really, really good podcasts that I really enjoyed as an individual agent. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. And they're big influences on, on me and how, how we both got started in podcasting was those guys, both had pie heaven and, uh, and Toby essentially yep. blazed the trail. Like at the time when you and I started the team building podcast, those were mm -hmm. the big guns. Uh, there really wasn't a lot of other people doing podcasts. The, the only other one, I'll give a shout out to Mr. Josh Smith, GSD mode. Yeah, that's true. He's still podcasting today. I'd say they were the three, the trifecta mm -hmm. that I would always talk about. Toby, Pat, and uh, Mr. Josh, Josh Smith. Those that are is awesome true. podcasts and still are awesome podcasts. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. So a uh, second podcast for me is uh, I would say Akimbo with Seth Godin. I love Seth's okay. stuff. Um, he is to me, like the, the absolute primary thinker in marketing right now. And it's just basically him. There's no guests. It's just him in his bathtub, literally in New York City, and Josh sharing a story and then expounding on it and relating everything back to his views on marketing, which I love. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. My last one is going to be Jocko. Um, I just think about the hours I've put into podcasts. So something outside of real estate that has created really big impact in my life. Uh, Jocko interviews a lot of ex-military, current military, talks about experiences he had overseas. And it's really um, inspirational because he doesn't just cover like current modern wars. He covers 
wars of the past. So he's talking about the Korea, uh, sorry, Vietnamese conflict. He talks about World War II, and he, he's still interviewing people that have experienced some crazy stuff. And while I'm working out, it jacks me up. So I love <laughs> hearing anything from Jocko or Goggins. Uh, oh, I get Goggins. going in my workouts. Yeah, me too. Yeah, listen to Jocko interview Goggins if you want your face <laughs> to melt. All right. And my last one is way out of left field. It is the PFF NFL podcast. Now here's why. And this is why it relates back to business. I have never heard a podcast that goes as deep into the team building strategy of why NFL teams are built the way they are and how individual performance is judged and, and, and the new and interesting stats and metrics they come up with to judge how individual people are performing and how does that fit into the overall context and the philosophy of the team. It's eye-opening, number one, and it's just a really good lesson for anybody that runs and puts together your own teams to start thinking at it, thinking about your team the way an NFL GM thinks about their team. You're, like, you're, just, you're trying to put the best team on the field every single day. Your pieces are con going to constantly be in flux and you have to have a f consistent philosophy that everything hangs on so that you know why you're hiring this particular person and what you're plugging them into and what you expect of them. So it just has a lot of interesting business benefits. Well, those were some awesome podcast recommendations. Let's be sure to include those in the show notes. I think we ended up with seven total. And mm -hmm. I think four were non-real estate specific and three were real estate specific. Of course, we'd be remiss to not recommend the team building podcast, which wow. does focus on people not selling real estate and helps people become entrepreneurs. So the next topic, I want to talk about um, the people we meet. And what I found from a very early time, I joined GoBundance um, back maybe five, almost five years ago. And I was actually invited by Pat Hyben after being a guest on his podcast several times. Yep. And what was so fascinating to me as I started going to the GoBundance events and then events after that was realizing and recognizing it's not just about the content that you gain uh, from the stage. It's, I would say, more so the content that you gain by the relationships that you create throughout the event. And more important than grabbing that content at the event, it's finding the people you want to be like when you grow up and having them become a member of your quote unquote board of directors. Somebody that you can mm -hmm. reach out to when you're going through a challenging time. Somebody that hold you accountable, which I call like my accountability buddies. And that was a game changer for me. I started doing that back in 2015. And now I'm six years in to looking for people that I want to be like when I grow up and putting them into my network, putting them on speed dial and truly being humble enough to reach out to them and ask them questions when I'm going through challenging times, depending upon the things I'm having challenges with. So I might have somebody, I have like Aaron West in Modesto, California, who's the nutrition expert and he's a big into triathlons. You know, I have different people for different mm -hmm. challenges that I have in my life. And I think that that was a really big uh, life hack that I thankfully gained in my mid thirties that I now have been able to apply. And it's really made me a different person. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, you and I know a lot of the same people and you know who's had an impact on my life. Uh, and, and then on top of that, the clients and the people that I've connected with over the years that are outside the real estate space have been huge for me. Um, I mean, one of, uh, one of my clients that's had the biggest impact on the digital marketing side and, and raised my skill level there, I met by happenstance at an event because they were speaking at the same event where I was attending. And I was attending because I was hanging out with a client who was also speaking there. Um, and I got to meet. So through one of those clients, I got to meet Bix Bixen, who was like the original personal development guru uh, back before Tony Robbins was Tony Robbins. He was Tony Robbins, you know, back in the uh, 70s and early 80s. And so I made some amazing connections there and got to meet people I never thought I'd be able to connect with all through just people that I've connected with in my network yeah. and, and also through podcasting. I mean, you and I have both been on podcasts and we've had a lot of people on our shows and you and I both make an effort that when we meet someone that we think we want to have them in our life, like we go after them and we connect with them yeah. on social media. We, we make sure that we get a chance to go see them in person if it's at an event or whatever, but we find ways to pull those people that are strategic relationships into our lives. We don't just let that go. Yep. No, I, I think that's a perfect point. And one of the things I'll share with the audience is that you have celebritized us to some extent. And it's funny, Johnson obviously wrote the book Micro Famous. If you're watching this video um, interview right now, you'd see it behind him on the wall. And what's so interesting is people think we're famous because we've created influence and impact in our world. But to Matt and I, and a lot of the other people that are at the top and their thought leaders, we still feel like we're the same guys that just got their real estate licenses or just kicked off their first podcast. We don't feel any different. And mm -hmm. so what's fascinating to me, one of the things I've discovered is the people that I look up to that I want to be like, they're just normal people. 
they'll allow you to go up to them and ask them some questions and mm-hmm. engage with them. Maybe they'll invite you to a happy hour to go grab lunch. But to Matt's point, be aggr- as aggressive as you want. That's your opportunity to win. I remember mm-hmm. the first time meeting Ben Kinney, I had always looked up to Ben. He was a, an influencer inside of Keller Williams and I was still at Berkshire Hathaway. It was like 2015 and I was at an event for Keller. Oh no, it was Boomtown, Boomtown mm-hmm. Unite. And I remember saying to Ben, hey, you want to go grab lunch? He's like, sure, let's go. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm having lunch with Ben Kinney. This, <laughs> right? But yeah. to Ben, he's just like in his hoodie. He's like, whatever, dude, I'll go grab some, lunch with some agents. He bought lunch, which I thought yeah. was super classy. But it's just, we put these people on this pedestal and it's really about who's willing to give the most. That's true leadership. So I don't think we have to speak a lot more on that. I do want to re, uh, talk about events because I think mm-hmm. getting out to these events is a big deal. Um, not only the content that we receive, but the people that we get to meet. And so I already mentioned one of my top events every year is Boomtown Unite. Um, hopefully we can do a real event next year and it's not virtual. I hope all of these events come back yeah. online. But Thanks. 2021 Boomtown Unite is one of the top three on my list. What about for you? Ooh, I don't, that's a good question. I would say social media marketing world here in San Diego. Um, I don't travel a ton for events. Uh, I might do more next year just from being stir crazy from this insanity of this year. But uh, I just had somebody on my show that does nothing but coach speakers on how to get speaking engagements. And he said, look, everything's full tilt, full speed ahead for events starting summer of 2021. So all the meetings that are all the meeting planners and event planners that put everything on hold in 2020 and the spring of 2021, they're, they're full speed ahead. So I think all the yep. events physically are, are planning on meeting that way uh, starting in summer of 2021. Absolutely. So yep. anyway. We think that as well. So Inman is another big one. I spoke at Inman in January. That's my second biggest. And then my last one uh, was VidCon. I went mm-hmm. two years ago in Anaheim. Cool, really cool event. Helps you kind of see what the future is going, like what direction everything's going in when it comes to video and technology, YouTube especially. Mm-hmm. And then of course, um, I'd be remiss not to bring up the Team Building Summit, which mm-hmm. we host every summer. We had to cancel this year, unfortunately. We are going full steam ahead in May 2021. If you want more information about the Team Building Summit, um, it's a two-day, all-day event where we interview 10 top teams that do over 100 million in volume every year. And we pull out the best content that they can share with the audience that is applicable in your space that you can go home and implement the day you get back from the event. If you want more information about that, you just go out to EliteRealEstateSystems.com, click on events, and you'll see all of our upcoming events. Yeah. And the thing that I like about the team building event, because I've, I've spoken there and, you know, Greg Harrelson uh, has spoken there and Greg McDaniel has spoken there. And let's, let's just say a lot of the people. We've had a lot of people. people. Yes, exactly. Yep. Uh, here's the point. Uh, one of the good things about a very, very focused event like this, and, and it's still young, I think this will be the, the third one, the second one in person or something like yep. that. Third in so, person. Yep. Third in person. So the, the good thing about a young event like this is that the content that you guys need, if you're in the, if you're in the team leader world or the indie broker world or whatever, like things are changing fast. I mean, you and I were talking about 60 virtual reality before you and I hopped on, right? Mm-hmm. So that kind of stuff is changing quickly. By the time that stuff makes it through all the barriers to get on stage at a place like Inman, or, or some of the other conferences, like it, that's been vetted. Too late. It's, it, sometimes it's too late for you to jump on those early trends. So yeah, that, that's the point of attending a very focused event that's specifically for team building is you're going to get the stuff that's working right this second. And then you'll see it on stage a year or two later, the people that are doing it now and sharing it at that team building event are going to be speaking on stage about it two years from now at Inman. Yep. I'm looking at the dates right now. It's May 17th, 18th, and 19th. And it is awesome. Um, The other event, Matt, that I want to bring up is our team building workshops. We've added a second day because a lot of people have said one day is not enough. Um, So we do one full day of team building and the second day of investing. And so we just kicked off an event. We wanted to see how it went. We um, had a mask mandate and social distancing, but ended up getting 40 people to our new office. We just opened our 10,000 square foot state-of-the-art hybrid tech-powered office of the future long sentence. I say it a lot. And we were so excited to sign up. Every person that came that was not already a coaching client of ours decided to join our coaching organization because they could truly see that we are moving in the direction of the future technology powered real estate office, not only real estate, but the WeWork space that has all the ancillary businesses tied to it. And to physically come and see the office and feel the emotion and get to attend one of the brokerage meetings and see how we hold the agents accountable, not to mention all the content surrounding investing and how we've been able to build a $10 million portfolio in two years by implementing some really simple strategies for acquiring single family and multifamily real estate. It's a jam packed event. So it's, it's literally a thousand dollars for two days and it includes all your meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner, happy hour, drinks, coffee, 
Um, during the event, you literally just text uh, a bartender who brings you drinks throughout the entire event. We keep people caffeinated. <laughs> it's an amazing time. We have happy hour every night. It starts on a Sunday night. Monday's investing. Tuesday's team building. Tuesday night, we have a party at my house. So everybody comes out. We do a catered dinner at my house, and then people fly out Wednesday. So we are hosting an event end of October. Um, we, we're going to try to release this podcast as soon as possible. So you guys have two weeks to plan this. We also negotiated a rate with a Marriott Aloft hotel, $79 a night. Good Lord. $79. I just finalized that deal recently. We make nothing on that. Of course, 79 bucks. I don't even know how they make anything on that. <laughs> so the event's 500 bucks a day. So you could just come to team building or just come to investing, but most people just go to both a thousand dollars with airfare and hotel and everything. You're going to be under $1,500, which is super inexpensive for an event. And you're going to be surrounded by like-minded individuals. These aren't new agents that just got licensed or people yeah. from other industries to Matt's point. It's very specific to building teams and entrepreneurship and or building a brokerage. Um, and of course, our flagship team went from 70 to 700 sides in six years. We'll show you the exact formula we used to do that. So would love for people to check that one out as well. Elite real estate systems.com. Click on events. I want to see you in my office in October. If you're not scared to travel right now. <laughs> well, I think it's going to be interesting. I think for those that are, that are ready, uh, we're getting stir crazy, man. It's uh, you know, know, a little, it. little too much time spent inside and I live in San Diego and even I'm getting stir crazy and I'm ready to travel. So I think there's probably a lot of people like us that want to get out and meet and network. Some you, human like, interaction, oh. baby. All right. I have to wrap in two minutes. So here we go. Book recommendations. I'm going to give you my three people are always asking me. I'm going to tell you the three that influenced me the very, very most um, to make me the person I am today. And I have read a lot of books. Uh, number one is going to be the one thing. What's the okay. one thing I need to focus on today to make an impact in my life based on the dreams that I've set? Okay. Um, number two is going to be the top five regrets of the dying. Mm -hmm. Am I truly living a purposeful life? Am I living up to my full expectation or am I living a life that somebody else wants me to live? And number three, I'm going to say right now would probably be the dream manager, which talks about recognizing that the people within your organization are not there just to make money, ones and zeros in a bank account. They're there to live and lead the life of their dreams. And so your organization, if you're a true leader, should be the solution to them living and leading the life of their dreams. And you should hire someone that serves as a dream manager, life coach, financial planner, et cetera. Those mm -hmm. three books combined, if you read those three books and start implementing the concepts in those books, you will be successful. Independent of what's in your bank account, you will be successful in life. And I know for a long time, all that mattered was the money. Um, and then once I had enough to take care of my family, all that mattered was the purposeful approach I took to my life. And those books helped me recognize what truly matters and that's serving other people. Yeah. Couldn't have said it better. I think if I give any book recommendations, we'll go over time because I can talk about that all day long. We'll do another episode <laughs> on that. So let's wrap cool. it up. Thanks everybody for sharing and liking and, and rating and reviewing the podcast, especially that's hugely helpful. I don't know if you know this, but it feeds the algorithm. It helps the show get discovered by more people, uh, which is really, really important. We want to keep on impacting more and more agents, team leaders, and brokers. So thank you so much for doing that. Thank you for sharing it, by the way, people that talk about the show in Facebook groups, that's also hugely helpful. That puts the show in front of more folks. We appreciate everyone that does that. So Jeff, the man, thank, the you, the legend, thank you to all and Appreciate to all it. a good night.